Andre Onana has been absolutely slaughtered by sections of the press and actually sections of the Manchester United fan base since he joined, with seemingly a lot of people wanting him to fail. It felt like there was a lot of people who had an issue with the way David De Gea was let go from the club. And I'm going to be honest, I don't believe the way that the club handled that transition um, was very classy. You know, offering him a contract and then rescinding the offer of that contract just highlights exactly how poorly run Manchester United are in the back end. And early on, it wasn't the easiest to defend because there were some errors in the opening two uh, Champions League games, uh, which the side is still fighting against, actually. And the scale of the criticism is yet to be matched by the praise he has not received, obviously, for turning his form around. Because we knew he was a good shot stopper and we knew he was good with his feet. And in those early weeks, he didn't really demonstrate either. Latterly, he started to demonstrate that very top-level shot stopping. He seems to be pulling out regular big saves from Manchester United that are literally winning us games, saving us points. And you might even be able to draw a line back all the way to that penalty save against Copenhagen in the Champions League for when that form started to turn around. But I think it's about time people recognise just how good Andre Onana is starting to look. And sticking by him amid those early season difficulties, and I think Onana has started to pay it back with great resilience match-winning performances. So I wanted to take a look at some of the stats and sort of illustrate just how important he's been um, as a goalkeeper for the club. So far in the Premier League, he is joint top for most clean sheets. He is first for his save rate. He is second for the most goals prevented. And he is second for the most saves. <laughs> he is getting a lot of trade. A hell of a lot of trade. It's unlike Arsenal, who've got their own goalkeeping issues and, and situation that I, I believe Arteta literally created. Um, Arsenal are really limiting the amount of shots that they even allow on their goal because of how good their defence is in front of them. That's not the case for United. We are allowing a hell of a lot of shots. Uh, in fact, it's only um, the newly promoted sides and West Ham that have actually faced more shots than Onana has for United this season so far. And against Everton, he made a string of saves. I have plenty of saves, including a brilliant effort to stop, stop Idrissa Gay scoring uh, that long-range shot. In doing so, Manchester United actually became the first side to keep 500 clean sheets in Premier League history, of which, you know, 1% of those are Andre Onana's. But I'm sure he's going to add to that percentage. He's now kept three clean sheets in his last three league games, meaning that he's gone 312 minutes without conceding a single league goal. He also has the second highest save percentage in the league with 51% uh, and has obviously kept the joint most clean sheets away from home, registering just three so far alongside Johnson. Ten Hag was confident uh, of him bouncing back and predicted a turnaround in form. Obviously, they've got a prior relationship from Ajax, but... He said we are happy with the goalkeeping group, definitely with Andre. He was in the semi-final of the Champions League last year uh, and he was in the final of the Champions League. He has the capabilities to be one of the best goalkeepers in the world and he has shown that he will do. We have already seen in games his great capabilities, also his personality after he made mistakes. Straight away he was owning those things. Uh, he will bounce back and I'm sure he will in the coming games as well. The importance of a good goalkeeper cannot be overstated um psychologically there's there's a lot to be had for knowing that you've got someone behind you that's not going to make a mistake every single uh, time a shot goes towards them and there is an aura that i think that onana has and sometimes that can be delusion i, I you know i think peter schmeichel had that I, I think he had this deluded air of how good he was i think he thought he was a lot better than he was but he was also world class and onana can get there too I think that's just part of the way they play. They're, they're confidence players in the same way that strikers can be confidence players. And to me, Onana looks every inch a Manchester United player from the way he carries himself, to the way he owns his mistakes, to the way he is performing on the pitch. The question is, are we getting the best out of Andre Onana at United? And I still think no. Because I think even though he has been uh, a massive staple of our success in the last few games, there's still so much more he can do. The command of his box, 
isn't quite 10 out of 10 just yet. And his distribution, which was one of the things that he was bought for, we haven't really seen because the midfield and the defence has been very much makeshift since the start of the season. I think once you see Martinez get back involved in the team, once you see, it, let's be honest, it might be Maynou, who's the, the first choice um, player to be collecting and, and progressing the ball up the pitch from midfield. Once you start to see those back in the team, I think you then start to see the best Onana. We saw it in the first couple of games and it seems to have been tempered out of his game since then. Um, but I still think he's going to get an assist this season. Um, it just might take a while before we actually see it. And it'd be interesting to look at what's changed since those opening few games. And I think, is it confidence alone? Is there instructions? Is there you know some mixture of both with Ten Hag giving all of his trust in there for um, his goalkeeping situation? Confidence is a massive part of Onana's game. And I think that's a big part of it. But also those big moments in games can can start to really diminish the media pressure on him. And like I said, that penalty save seems to be a bit of a watershed moment because that colossal penalty save literally brought the only points that United have got today in the Champions League. Let everybody know we've got a real player here that can step up in the biggest moments. And there hasn't been a single issue that comes to mind since that moment. And a highlight like that can sometimes be all it takes to put you on the right track. Our defence is improving. And I think that's a key to, to limiting the number of shots Onana faces uh, because it's not fair to, to judge a goalkeeper when he's getting the amount of trade that Onana's getting. It's a lot easier to be a good goalkeeper behind a good defence. Um, but we haven't really had that for him. Improving at the back also improves Onana. And I think the next questions we have to ask are, what next? Where do we improve him further? And like I've already touched on, the, the ball progression and the, the ball playing, we, we saw it in preseason, we saw it the first couple of weeks, and it's disappeared out of his game. And I think that's because of the personnel of the rest of the team and the way focus has had to shift, the way uh, it has to adapt to the personnel that we've got. We have seen him forced to adapt to a new environment where the spotlight has been incredible, especially from pricks like TalkSport. Um, that's been on him since the minute he walked into the training ground. That can't be easy. And it's good to see that there is a spirit on display from him and that, uh, you know, adaptability is in there in him and the resilience is in there in him. And like I said, I think you see more and more once Martinez gets in, once Shaw gets back settled, those are going to help him because those are players he can trust playing it out to. Now, we were all quite excited when he signed. Uh, and the likelihood was that he probably wasn't going to be going to AFCON uh, after declaring himself out of Cameroon's plans. Um, but then the manager that he fell out with was sacked and he's been reinstated into the national team. So while that's great news for him, it's not really good news for us. And we could be without Onana for the entirety of January. And we don't know enough about Bain Deer. And even though I would back Tom Heaton to fill in, I think he's a step behind Onana um, in terms of what he can offer the team. So I'm kind of not rooting for Cameroon while rooting for Cameroon at the same time. Can we just have our keeper back, please? See you in the next one. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.